I want to welcome to Hopeful Tribe, Shimdi Ihezie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> that was good. You nailed it. Sweet. Sweet. Welcome. Welcome. Chimdi has a delightful YouTube channel that I can just watch forever. Sometimes I'll just hit play. I keep uh, going from one video to the next. It's fun. I want to share your YouTube channel just in case people haven't seen it yet. So you no, know they hit the right place, you know, but I'll put a link in the video description too because you know. I keep meaning to update both my header and my little icon because I'm a bald headed person now. So I really wanted to update that. So yeah, year I'll have like a new fresh look on my on my channel. Yeah, totally. Um, I would get some people on that. Like you need some people at this point. <laughs> It's still a one woman show. You're right. It's still a one woman you know? show. At some point, you got to commit. You got to invest in yourself. Right. Be like, yeah, let me get some help. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to send you one of my favorite podcasts about that. I love about that. When it's time to hire a team. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be that person who's like, thank you to my team. <laughs> thank you for my people for helping oh, me. Yes. Well, that's going to be you very shortly. <laughs> There's two things that I, I like. So I, when I think about manifestation, I like to manifest like experiences, right? And yes. I've had so many of them happen. One was to make people straight up weep for my videos. Like I wanted people mm -hmm. to watch my content and be and be moved so deeply they're just like weeping. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting comments that were like, "I am just sitting here bawling," and I was like, "Yes." <laughs> <laughs> And the next one, it hasn't quite happened, but it's happened like pretty close, which is to be like, because my friends know me and they know I've been doing YouTube and they're like, you know, supportive and all that. But for a long time, it's been a very, very small community. And one of my following dreams was to have um, one of my friends just being out in the world and someone comes to them and it's like, I was watching this YouTuber. Her name is Chimdi. And they're like, <laughs> Um, I know who that is. And I haven't gotten that one yet, but I've gotten something close, which is that my friends will just like, I'm not on Instagram at the moment because of a social media fast, but um, they'll just like post a photo of us together when we were hanging out on social media. And then their friends will message them like, how do you know Chimdi? And they're like, uh, she's a friend of mine. And they're like, oh, and they like reference the YouTube. So that one's pretty close. And the next one I want to manifest. And then there's two. One is, yeah, being like, I'm just thanking my team for all your support. And the one I really want to manifest is when like folks are like, y'all, I have some really big news. I wish I could share it. I really wish I could share it with you guys. I can't right now, but I just want to let you know that something really big, new, exciting thing happening, but I signed the NDA, so I can't talk about it. But just so you know, things are going great over here. And I just, that one hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I know it will, and I'm really excited <laughs> to make a video that's like, I'm not going to tell you, but something great has happened. Okay? <laughs> so we'll get there. It's all coming. It's all, it's all coming. It's all on its way. Yeah, thank you. No, no need to be in a rush because it's all coming. Amen. Mm -hmm. And there's always more. That's what's so fun about I life, right? About it is that there literally is always more dope stuff, and it never ends. And then every time you think you've like reached the height, new great stuff happens, and you're like, literally, I couldn't have imagined this. It, it really feels like an embarrassment of riches. So you're like, literally, I'm. I don't need more stuff, truly. And God is like, I'm not done. Here's yeah. the Goodness, God is good, huh? Yeah, man. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I just feel uh so blessed like every day. Amen. Every day. And I have um done a lot of stuff in my 56 years on the planet, Whoa. but there's still a whole lot more out there for me, you know. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, that's wild how much life, how much life that is. I'm I'm actually gonna be turning 31 in less than a month. <gasps> yeah. Whoa. Oh. 30 I feel like is like the sexy birthday. So now 31 is just like, you in it. Yeah, girl, keep it going. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they say that at the one birthdays are the actual beginning of the decade. So when you turn 30, you were just finishing up your 20. I was, that, <laughs> that is what it felt like. And it feels like this last year has been that like, oh, like eye opening, like, oh, 
I'm a woman. I can do yes. what I want. Like, Beyonce <laughs> song, grown woman. Like, I listened to it when I was in my 20s. So I was like, yeah, I get it. And now I listen to it and I'm like, oh, no, it's true. Like, it's actually true what she is saying. It's it's really, it's pretty amazing how you, it's all experiential. Like, true mm -hmm. experiential, you know? I remember when I was uh, 31, I was in a group of women that met every Thursday night. And mm -hmm. we... Um, did a lot of growing together for seven years every Thursday. Wow. And I was the youngest. They were in their 40s. Mm -hmm. And I remember them saying one time, well, you're not even human until you're 40. And I kind of got my feelings ah! hurt. <laughs> I got my feelings hurt. Yes, <laughs> I was I was like, you guys, <laughs> that's not very nice to say. I think I'm a human. <laughs> Literally not in the species for another decade. What have I been doing? I'm yeah, but now that I'm in my fifties, I understand what they were trying to say. You know, what like were they trying to say because I'm very curious. I'd like to okay. Know. So what they were trying to say was they, that somebody in their forties has just so much more experience mm. that they're more like grounded in who they are. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they really know. <laughs> they don't kind of know. They're not discovering. They know who they are. <laughs> so, I'm curious about because I, you know, I love these spiritual topics. So, because I'm thinking about the idea of having a rigid slash set identity. So, is it that is it that they have decided their identity and they are grounded in it in a way that's like there's a rigid rigidity to it, or is that they understand? who they are and that is a person who is able to handle life as it comes. Yeah, I don't know. I can't speak for them. Well, for you, I guess. You know, but for me, I mean, geez, I, I don't agree with the opinion. I think that every human is a human from the day they're born. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> and, um, and actually, sometimes I prefer the company of small humans, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. they're so easy to be around there's it's yeah. not complicated yeah. they just love they're just pure mm -hmm. love yeah. you know and you yeah you don't have to guess how they're feeling you know <laughs> <laughs> it's so, of conditioning it's just like yeah. they're just who they are yeah but i mean i i um i i, I think i get that like they felt like they weren't fully in their power until mm. when they were in their 40s. Now, mm. I think this is a different time. And I think that mm. younger people um, are looking a whole lot more empowered, empowered than they used to. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I was in my 30s, um, I, all, well, my early 30s, I had two kids, mm. two biological kids already. Mm. And they, uh, I had those two in college and, oh. and I realized looking at them one time when they were nine and 10, that really they were my spiritual elders. Interesting. That while it was very clear that I was in charge in case of an emergency, <laughs> <laughs> that they really were way beyond me emotionally and spiritually. Wow. So on those levels, I would follow them. That's fascinating. And I do think, I mean, I'm a big believer of like everyone who comes into our life is there to teach us is, you know, we have one kind of mission, goal, purpose, and it's just ongoing healing and growth and learning discovery. And so if there's something in our life that's blocking us from doing that, we are going to be given the gift of someone or some circumstance that's going to allow us to overcome that thing. So that, that makes a lot of sense to me. And that's such a beautiful thing. I was going to say when you said you were 30 with two kids, I was like, young mom, but I'm realizing yes. that's like a very like millennial thing is like, <laughs> with children? Calm down. Like, you'll get oh, there. You don't need to run. Girl, I got married when I was 18, when I was a freshman in college. <laughs> and here's the thing. When my husband, who was a little older, told me he wanted to have babies, I laughed at him out loud. I was like, whatever. <laughs> Maybe in graduate school? <laughs> not now. That's not 
not <laughs> happening, right? That was not a thing that we did in my family. My mom was a doctor and my dad was a lawyer. Wow. We did not get married yet. The actual stereotype. I love that. I love we that. got a little picket white fence around our home. <laughs> oh, girl, we had an indoor pool, okay? <laughs> Inside the house. I went to boarding school, okay? With the uniforms, with the... Oh, you lived it. I can't relate. <laughs> you lived okay, right. totally uh, bougie uh, childhood, really. Wow. Yeah. So uh, it is funny that I ended up spending most of my life on the streets uh, working with people who didn't mm -hmm. have houses. Because <laughs> it just speaks to the fact that, yeah, if it's your purpose, you're going to do it. It don't matter yeah. where you started. You're going to end up where you're supposed to end up. Exactly, exactly. But anyway, um, I forgot where I was going with that. You were talking about you being a young mom. Oh, yeah. But so it wasn't the norm in my family. Usually you would get married after you had your career established and then have babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but so my older husband, he was 26 when I was 18. Um, he wanted babies. And he he was like pitching it to me all the time. And I would just laugh at him. And then one day, one of his friends um, had had a baby. And she asked me to babysit this child when it was two days old. <laughs> now, I, gotta go. I <laughs> didn't think it was weird at the time because I wasn't a mom. Like, But now I'm like horrified. <laughs> That she would leave her baby. Well, I gotta get out. It's been 48 hours. <laughs> you look great. You need to call in the troops. We need to call Girl, she went party. out dancing. Okay. <laughs> I'm a fan of this woman. She has her priority straight. <laughs> I could be I'm out. gonna even get my own, you know, my own needs met. I appreciate oh my it. God. I could not after any of my births at two days go dancing. So 48 hours. She could. Right. <laughs> she did. And I stayed home with that baby. And here's a little word of advice if any women of childbearing age are watching. If <laughs> you don't want a baby, do not hold newborns because they will raise your estrogen and progesterone levels so high that if a man touches you, you will get pregnant. <laughs> This is great advice. Thank oh, you. Yeah. I, you know, after I was uh, done having babies and I was still childbearing, mm -hmm. I would not touch a baby under six months old. You know, like, I learned I love, well. that. I love the idea of like having a new, a friend with a newborn and they're like, can you help? And I'm like, I just have a date later. So yeah. I have like, <laughs> levels right now. I love you though. I just can't <laughs> mess with my hormone levels. But. You know, next week he's out of town, so we can, we can make some plans. That's very good to know. I'm locking up. Right? Important advice, right? <laughs> <laughs> I went home after that babysitting, the newborn, and my hormones were all over the place. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Let's have a baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> There you go. I'm just thinking about God being like, got him. Yeah. <laughs> got him. But I honestly, I don't regret a second of it because I got this beautiful, healthy son oh. named Tim. And he is 36 now. And he has two babies. And they are Ava and Jackson. And they're 11 and 5. And so... It was all meant to be. That's you know? And I, I want to do follow up questions, but I'm like, this is supposed to be about me. But I want to be like, <laughs> oh, grandmama, like how that? How, what is like? Are they also your spiritual elders? <laughs> I'm curious. We can talk about that offline, though. Okay. Well, we can go back and forth a little here and there, but it should mainly be about you because you're so fabulous. You know, <laughs> no words. No words. <laughs> You really are, though. I mean, I'm glad that you know that because I didn't really know that at mm -hmm. your age. I kind of suspected that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it tells me I'm great. Like, I, think I know I'm it's not great. politically correct. <laughs> I'm pretty great. What do y'all think? 
<laughs> and, and here's the thing. I think that there were moments that I was clear about my greatness mm. in my early 30s. However, it wasn't consistent. Like it would go up and down, up and down. I think I was great one moment, and then I think I was a piece of shit. You know, <laughs> like, what were one of your like of greatness. I'm sorry, at the time. What were one of your moments of greatness that you recognized at the time? Well, any time that I was like in the flow, just yeah. kind of doing my work, yeah. um, um, being with my kids, mm. or helping people out on the streets, mm. or I used to do stand up comedy. So really? doing stand up, playing music. In those moments, I knew that I was great because God is great and we're all one, you know? Yeah. Um, so I always knew in those moments, but, yeah. you know, in those random moments when I was too focused on <laughs> what appears to be real, then I would waver. Mm, that's such a that's such a powerful truth that the closest we are to God, the, the greater we feel. Just to, just simply put, simply put, because it's God's greatness that we're tapping into the whole time. It's such mm -hmm. a reminder. It's like, oh, if I'm not feeling low, it means there's some kind of spiritual disruption that's happening, and I need to like bring it back to God. Exactly. So what's happened over the years is I've just worked on strengthening that connection. Yeah. So that it never wavers. Amen. That it's always there. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have to worry about anything. Are you are you there? Have you reached that tensile strength of just like, yeah, we're locked in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's really beautiful. It's really oh, that's beautiful. I love that. I feel like that's yeah. kind of like it feels <laughs> a little bit to me. Like, well, sometimes I think it's like a shortcut, not shortcut, but like uh, trying to rush to the end, which is like, let's skip all the suffering and pain and struggle and just get right to just pure bliss and joy and peace all the time. But also there's a part of me that knows deep down that's like, no, that is what you're supposed to be doing is peaceful and joyful. If you've got stuff that's coming up, let's work through it and get it out of the way because you are supposed to be just connected and grounded and living in the light and living in the flow and living in the love. So yeah, let's do this work to get rid of the BS, you know, because you're supposed to be exactly where you are, which is like fully connected and living every moment from that truth. So I'm glad to hear that you got there because sometimes I'm like, you know, do, do we struggle forever, but it's like, <laughs> do we struggle so we can live in the peace. I'm like, okay. Well, and remember that you used to be there when you were a baby. You have been there already. So all you're trying to do with all this healing work is to remember. Mm. that state of complete connection and just being pure love. Mm. That's all you're trying to do is remember who you are. I've got this photo on my fridge of me as a baby and I'm just like, <gasps> like something oh. in my house and I'm just like looking. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, oh. I'm just like, looking. What y'all do? I'm just pure. 